Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. Today I am joined by the Trollbeard. Howdy. And that's it. No one else showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Jer- Jeremy might still, but Jeremy is Jeremy, and Jeremy does what the, whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> Jeremy is as Jeremy does. That's right. But, okay, so right before the show started, we were talking about Shonen Jump, and I can't find how to buy physical versions. I don't want to buy a digital version. Yeah, I think uh, Viz Media releases it here in the U.S. Yeah, you want to keep started? I'll, I'll 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 try to look you up here. Yep. So this week, apparently, we're going to talk about Shonen Jump, and we're because <laughs> <laughs> uh, why not? And we occasionally talk about video games. It's a monthly, right? Uh, as far as like U.S. That I'm not sure, because it's it's weekly every goddamn week in Japan. Oh my god! No, like I said, it's it's you know twenty pages a week. A lot of these fucking artists are doing every goddamn week, like the slave labor esque conditions of manga artists is absolutely insane. There's nobody in the production of manga or anime. That is living comfortably. It's all insane amounts of work for almost no pay. <laughs> According to Reddit, the English Shonen Jump is only digital. Oh, so they switched entirely to digital now. Yeah, that makes me sad. Uh, I might have to go buy an old one <laughs> just to have it. I yeah, bet I, I, bet I guess I yeah, friends... since since Viz took over, I guess they didn't deem it worthy anymore. Because there's a uh, like, I want to say one of the only like companies that's really putting out physical copies anymore. They're only doing the uh, the collected issues, the Tonko yeah. Bone, as they call them. The volumes of manga. That's crazy. That's like It's one of those things that it's a major thing I didn't even know passed me by. <laughs> it makes me sad that they stopped releasing those giant books. Yeah. But again, you know, like the the actual jump in Japan, like that stuff is on paper, like worse than newspaper, pretty much. <laughs> and it like, smells uh, terrible. Like yeah. it's crazy. And then, I honestly, I feel like it was the same way here in America. It, it was, it was like below average printing here. Yeah. It was, you know, bottom of the barrel. <laughs> like, hey, damn. Like if 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 we could just like throw these letters at you with sound, we would. Like, let's go get recycled paper and don't bother to clean it. Yeah, because that's the <laughs> thing is like it's a gimmick in so many actual anime is the giant stack of old jump they're taking out to the dump to be recycled and burned. I the thing I always thought with Shonen Jump was the whole point was to go get you to buy the actual manga, but you could just wait and read the whole manga. It's, well, at least most of it was shown in Jump. Well, in tiny bits. Well, the thing with Jump is most of Jump's business is long serials. So you're looking at, you know, like I just said, like fucking Naruto went for 15 years. The average, yeah. like, popular Jump series goes for at least four. But could you not have just bought the actual Naruto manga and gotten the story faster? No. You oh. would have had to no. So they publish like all the issues up to a certain point, and then they recollect those issues based on you know okay. how popular it is into the volumes. And those were vo- those volumes are released at higher quality premium prices. I okay, so, so basically th- a very similar to the way Marvel and DC do it here. Yeah, well, now Marvel and DC like the. You know the single loose pages are also highly high quality prints. Oh, of course. They're just that, not... I mean, as far as the story wise, like you, yeah, can, like you can just wait there's until almost yeah. There's almost no difference as far as like the structure of release for the story. I gotcha. But you can be you know a consumer that just waits for the volumes to come out, like catch a issue or two here and jump. It's like, oh, this seems cool. And then when the first like volume comes out, they like all of like show to jump like in the in the pages in between like those like short stories essentially every week from each one of those series. 
is nothing but advertisements. Like it's like the sheer amount of like print ads, like the crap you used to see in the middle of every Sunday newspaper. Shit, you can get Shonen Jumps from 2004 for four bucks on Amazon. Yeah, there, might, there's not really much resale value in it. I might have to do that. Well, you can resell it to idiots like me. No, I'm not going to spend yeah. much money on it. <laughs> so maybe four or five bucks is about where it should be. So welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast, where we sometimes talk about video games. <laughs> I'm just straight up stealing that line from the Co-Optional Podcast. Uh, but this week we are going to talk about what we've been playing this week. We've got some news, and I've got some follow-up news from an old podcast episode. I say old, it's like a few weeks ago. It's not very old. Yeah. I'm dropping frames. Stop dropping frames, Streamlabs. I'm blaming that on you. Okay, so we're going to get straight into it. Uh, I played some Doom this week. And, uh... It's Doom. <laughs> you talking 2016 Doom? New Doom? Yeah. Yeah. It's on Game I, uh, Pass, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, they added Doom and Rage the same day they yeah. showed off uh, all the QuakeCon stuff. That's just smart, man. Like, just putting your game out there on Game Pass. Because there's... I got to imagine they're still making some money. Microsoft has to be paying them something. And... They got new games coming out, so go ahead and put it on Game Pass. That's smart. And I've been playing Doom. It's all right. Like, I don't know. It's it's the same way I feel about Wolfenstein. We're like, this is a good shooter, but that's about it. And the world's pretty neat. Um, they said with Doom Eternal, they're going to expand the lore, which I'm actually very excited about because I love the lore of Doom or what could be there. So that'll be interesting. But other than that, like I'm enjoying it okay. Did you play it? Yeah, I, I played it when it came out. I've tried to replay it again because my roommate owns it. He bought it on one of the sales. I tried to replay it again. And it's just like I always get to a certain point and I'm like, well, it's just going to be more of this for like yeah. eight more levels. Now... Speaking of things I've played, and you mentioned Wolfenstein, like I went back in to play the DLC for Wolfenstein 2. And Wolfenstein 2 is like, there's a lot more to both Wolfenstein and Wolfenstein 2 than what Doom is offering. Just Doom is almost like playing Tony Hawk. Yeah. Like, you're, it's, it's all like getting into a flow. And, you know, the music, God damn it, Bear McCreary. Or did Bear McCreary? I think that's the guy. I don't know. You're you're the source for that kind of stuff, not me. Uh, well, Bear McCreary did the God of War stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he does a lot of music. I think he's the guy who did the Doom soundtrack. Oh crap, Doom 2016. Because it may be. The other guy that does a lot of shit now. These id games, they're just... I guess they're not for me. They're good games. They're fantastic games. Wolfenstein is fantastic. And the world that Wolfenstein creates is fantastic. It's the same thing with Doom. But the gameplay just... I don't know, man. That's not... Yeah, Mick, Mick Gordon. The Gordon. Australian guy or New okay. Zealand guy that... He he also is one of those guys that has just like an insane resume of high quality music for a lot of high high budget games lately. Huh. That's crazy to work on like a lot of different games. Dude's hustling. Yeah, I mean, like when you think of like uh there like Doom, like I listened to the soundtrack longer than I played the game. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's 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 like the thing with uh like uh I was telling Bob when I was playing a little bit of Sonic Mania Plus like a week or so ago and he asked, Hey, is that worth getting? Well it's like the Encore DLC is like five bucks. And I literally spent that five dollars. Like I bought Sonic Mania essentially just to listen to the music. 
Right. Like the the game is almost ancillary for me at that point because I realize now listening to some music today even I heard like some of like the coin and checkpoint drops Hmm. as like samples in a song. Yeah. And, And I just realized like how like Pavlovian that programming of you know, six year old me playing Sonic Two. <laughs> how 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 much like that music made that game? Because those games were never good. <sighs> Sonic Mania is the closest to like a good Sonic game I've probably ever played. I don't know, Sonic and, for some people is really good. Well, is they enjoy it? Yeah, but mechanically. It's always been second rate. Like to what Mario? Like plat- well, to to any platformer. Yeah. Like the one gimmick it has is speed and animation. Like, right. The sheer like quality of the presentation is there. Like it's pretty. It's pretty to look at, ugly to play. Yeah, I was always a Nintendo kid, and my cousin was a Sega kid, and I was always grateful for that because I feel like I got the better experience with Mario. Yeah, I I always was a Sega kid. You know, to the hideous disappointment that was the Dreamcast. Right. Which, to be fair, like, the time you spent with the Dreamcast was next level fun. But then it was just over so fast. You're like, ah, bro, what the fuck? (laughs) Because all the high points of the Dreamcast library were just arcade ports, essentially. Uh, and you know, Sonic... I got Centipede, and I love that. Well, again, that's just another layer yeah. removed of arcade port. Well, no, Marvel's Capcom 2. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Choo Choo Rocket. Uh, uh, crazy, crazy Taxi. Uh, crazy ta- <laughs> uh, Sonic, Sonic Adventure is probably the only good game outside of Shinmu. What about Soul no, Calibur? <laughs> Soul Edge. No, Soul Edge? Soul Cal- I don't remember. Yeah, they had uh, the original Soul Calibur and Soul Edge both on Dreamcast. I don't know if Soul Edge ports? released all arcade ports. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 like, literally. And then... It Why was do you do this to me well, every week? You give me some kind of existential crisis every fucking week. <laughs> Well, hey, at least, you know, Fantasy Star Online wasn't an arcade port. It may have been. (laughs) You never know. (laughs) At this point, Japan is crazy. Yeah, yeah, everything is suspect. That's right. Oh, man. I'm glad I didn't get a Dreamcast until like two years ago. (laughs) Oh, really? I had one at launch, and it was busted as fuck. Yeah, I I have Centipede, Soul Calibur, Marvel's Capcom 2. Uh, I have a Street Fighter game too i don't know which one i just kind of randomly bought stuff that i thought i would like and then played all of them once and now it sits under my tv and has so much dust on it (laughs) yeah but that was the thing with um dreamcast was like at launch there were there were big batches of either dreamcast where the disk drive didn't actually read or massive batches of discs produced at certain factories that didn't get finalized. Right. So then they didn't read. So like Damn. I, I wanna say the game was called Blue Striker. Oh let me see. Blue Striker. I don't know. The uh, hold on. Dreamcast launch games. It was a blue stinger. Is this gonna be so? Like it was this game of the week. Yeah, it, it was a weird survival horror game that came out, and I was a massive Resident Evil guy. And here was this game that was kind of like a knockoff Resident Evil, and I just wanted to try it out. So I exchanged 
like four different Dreamcasts and like six different copies of this game trying to get it to work. I couldn't get it to work, so then I had to settle for Sonic Adventure, which was a better game overall when I eventually got to play Blue Stinger. But uh yeah, man, it was it was a nightmare. Like I was cursed from the launch from day one with the Dreamcast. And then I think some fucking drug addict stole it. <laughs> I forget how I lost my Dreamcast. What the fuck is this Blue Stinger game? It's weird, man. Yeah, I think it also was an arcade port. <laughs> Who's dancing? Oh, shit! Dude was doing the, uh... What do the kids call the T? Is it just a T-pose? T oh, yeah, T-posing. Yeah. You T-pose to assert your dominance. Oh, my God, don't even... Oh, hey, they switch characters. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, like, it was an interesting game for the time, but it was fucking terrible. It looks it. Uh, so, so what's happening? What's the story? Oh, shit. Well, essentially, for Blue Stinger, there's, like, this outbreak on this, like, research base. It's this base on an ocean, so there's all these weird tentacle things. There's a giant monster you fight in like one of the big holding tanks. So you gotta like drain the water and then fight the thing. It's dumb. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all the information. Yeah, that's all you really know is it's stupid. Like Damn. the weird like craze of survival horror games after like Parasite Eve and Resident Evil kind of were successful. There was a lot of trash. Oh yeah. my god. All right, so back to not so much trash, but how is the DLC for Wolfenstein? What is so? It? Well, they're called the Freedom Chronicles. So there's four episodes. One was episode zero, which is essentially like you're playing like a small chunk of basically what the missions ended up being, giving you like kind of like info. Like it's like, and then here's Gunslinger Joe fighting his way. You know, it's all like. World War Two era esque like propaganda films about the yeah. heroes yeah. fighting the Nazis, the resistance. It looks like he's wearing a varsity jacket. Yeah, he was a football player that he's a, he's a you know black football player that became you know a slave under the Reich that took over America, and he's playing on the team called the Untermensch, which means the lesser men. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Uh, so there's just all these, like, just these blonde Nazi fucks just, like, beating them up, essentially, in the in the soccer game, because they're playing actual football. <laughs> Not this horse That's shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, they're just basically out there to get beat up, like a, like the fucking, uh, uh, Washington Generals. <laughs> okay. Like that, like, like. Whatever the team that always loses to the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not Washington. It's something generals. God I damn don't it. remember. So it's yeah, a long time since I even thought about the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> yeah, so the, so this there essentially to be clowned on, yeah. you know, and then finally Gunslinger Joe just loses his shit, punches one of the guys, and you know breaks out. Just starts killing all these people. Damn. But yeah, like the three different characters you play all have different stories. And essentially, they're just repackages of how the game works. Yeah. And to the point to the, where they're repackaging essentially, like almost like a, like a procedural generated roguelike, taking okay. like. They're they're not procedurally generated, but like they're taking these chunks of previous maps and kind of redecorating them slightly, rearranging like the pattern you'd go through them to kind of make a new level. Gotcha. And just with like the set dressing of like the story and like the animated panels the guiding fuck are you through. You doing? I like that we're using your gameplay, so I can. <laughs> what are you doing? It, it, like this game's hard, man. You 
just like so a lot around. of I'm looking for ammo and loot. Oh, well, get good. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, see, that's been the biggest problem for me with Wolfenstein. Uh, well, I don't remember if the original Wolfenstein uh, had the same issue, but this one especially was really bad at telling you when you're getting hurt. Oh, okay. Like, this game is fucking terrible letting you know you're being shot. Because playing through the original like campaign of Wolfenstein 2, and I played through all of uh, Gunslinger Joe's episode, I did not finish the other two just because they were... It was just, you know, much like our thing we just talked about with, you know, 2016 Doom. It was like, yeah. hey, this is just a bunch of the same shit. I would love to get someone on the podcast that like really gets into these games and maybe just well, kind of explain it. Well, I got really into Wolfenstein too. Like the narrative characters, the gameplay then, you know, that first run through yeah. were, were exceptional. I mean, there were hideous, like difficulty spikes. And again, like I said, the, notification of you being shot is absolutely atrocious to the point where there's some levels uh, at towards the end of, you know, Gunslinger Joe's campaign where there's these like mech robots kind of like, like the movie, I robot that is running at you. Yeah. Just shells and they shoot lasers and these things hurt pretty bad. And I'm just getting shot in the back by these guys. And I look down, I'm like 14 health, no armor. I'm like, where the fuck did all my health go? Is that right. 100 armor and 100 health like I six think seconds ago? That's kind of an id thing because you're constantly taking damage from all over the place and having to pick up health and armor. And I think that that's just kind of an id thing. Yeah, but with like Doom 2016, there's a lot more visual cues and okay. feedback to tell you, hey, you're getting shot in the back. Like in this one, you just kind of see like a minor red tint at the bottom of the screen if you're getting shot in the back. Yeah, I got and you. I see. Like, 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 just the the feedback okay. of you being told you're being shot is just piss poor. Uh, the game works a lot like Doom 2016, where you're... the first Wolfenstein the Machine Games put out, it was like, see this giant dog thing here. Like, yeah, this thing killed me so goddamn fast. Yeah, I like I did not realize like sixty health did none. Yeah, like I was dead so quick. That thing hit so hard. I didn't even hear it originally when it first ran up. It was just like, oh hey, you have no health left, and this thing's murdering you, and you're you can't shoot it fast enough to kill it now. So prepare to die. <laughs> what are you throwing at these guys? Yeah, fucking gunslinger Joe's throws fucking canned goods. I think it's bugged. <laughs> So, like, all of the characters, you know, either be BJ Blaskowitz has his hatchets. Uh, the stealth lady has, like, throwing knives. Yeah. And the third guy, his story, he has something else. But the whole gimmick with Gunslinger Joe is that he's, you know, he was a quarterback, football player. He fucking chucks that can good really hard. But, <laughs> like, 99% of the time, it just, like, bothered people. <laughs> oh shit! So I would throw it, and unless like you were close enough and hit him in the head, they would just fall down and get back up, and then you're just fucked. You're like, God damn it! Oh, What's the dog. point of this? Oh damn! Yeah, he takes like forty or health. Yeah, like you see, like if you're that watching sucks. the screen, like even if you slow it down, like you'll see like the feedback on the screen, like it just kind of blinks. Yeah. And then bam, one laser beam, there goes like a hundred HP, and now I'm dead. Like <laughs> so it's a game where like the first one it fed in like the, the levels were better designed to facilitate the different styles of play. It's so, like the, the original one machine games did, like it gave you options for just full on complete stealth, just pull out dual wheel guns, go run and gun, murder everything. But the problem with this game was like the, like I said, the feedback for your damage isn't that great. 
And then once you initiate combat, you've got to keep moving. Like you can't fucking stop. Yeah. Because the problem is when you see the alarm go off here, infinite monster closets. Enemies don't stop spawning until you kill the last like captain or whoever sets off the broadcast. Right. So you're just sitting there like, man, just give me a goddamn break. You're just running through all these animals trying to find the one guy to shoot so you can stop them from spawning infinitely. Yeah, I don't like stuff like that. Yeah, that there's a lot of missteps. And like had they had a little more coherent like gameplay design like they did for the first one, plus the the, the incredible story they tell with Wolfenstein 2, it would have been way higher on anybody's list the year it came out. Yeah. But it but um the thing I didn't like so much about the DLC is I liked a lot of the characters, I liked the style of the way they were telling the story. But each character kind of essentially has one of the powers that the super suit BJ Blasquist gets in the main campaign. Yeah. So then you're just kind of playing a gimped version of BJ. You know, yeah. with like the the missions designed for it, like kind of like the the setups and the layouts. The Freedom Chronicles are essentially kind of like challenge missions almost. That's what I was thinking. And they are literally they're supposed to be gimped versions. Yeah, so like uh you know, Gunslinger Joe here has the the shoulder charge move. So like I can just run into people and splat them or weakened walls, he just breaks through, you know, straight up, you know, juggernaut rush. I don't and know then, why, but when you said weekend balls, I was thinking like the weekend. <laughs> but uh, I don't know why my brain went there. Yeah, like the the stealthy uh, assassin lady. She has the constrictor suit upgrade. So, like in the main campaign of Wolfenstein Two, you have these different upgrades. It's like the suit that's essentially keeping BJ Blazkowicz alive. Yeah. Because I don't know if you played the first Wolfenstein. A good chunk of it. So, well, essentially, at the end of that game, you set off a nuke to kill the bad guy, and BJ Blazkowicz is assumed dead, essentially. He he pretty much almost dies. Yeah. And the they, beginning of the second one, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. But, uh... So, like, with these upgrades, like I said, there's the one, the ramshackles or whatever I think they're called, is the one where you work like this, where you just run through people. There's one that's a constrictor suit that literally, like, you'll see all these vents on the ground. And you can just, like, crawl through and, like, sneaky snake your ass through these tiny vents. So that's what the stealth lady gets. And then the other guy gets the stilts. So there's a stilt upgrade where you just like double tap jump and now you're walking on giant fucking stilts. See, that sounds like fun to me. Like Wolfenstein, yeah, the like first the, one doesn't Those have... mechanics are cool. Yeah. It's just going back, you know, so many months later and playing, you know, lesser versions sure. of the character that could have all three of these upgrades, not having all of your guns the way you had them, like the routines you had your play style is limited based on what the game is willing to give you for that particular campaign. Yeah, I feel like this is just the devs being like, what if kind of thing. Like, you want an extra yeah. challenge? Yeah, because they tell some fun stories. Like, I like like the character setups. And like, yeah, here's these fucking robots. Did you see how fast that thing murdered me before I could get out of the animation of refilling the coolant in my yeah. suit because I'm on Venus. Okay. I th- that's where this Mars or Venus. I think it's Venus. Yeah, the Nazis build a space base. Jeez. Well, the first game, you went to like the, the moon. They had a goddamn space station on the moon. The first Wolfenstein you blew up. And now you go to Venus. Um, there's a big spoilery thing in the 
campaign of Wolfenstein 2 that happens here. And like I said, they're just reusing some of the assets. Some of the some of the rooms are basically like mirrors, like old yeah. school like Mario 64 tracks. <laughs> but uh so would you recommend or don't recommend? I, I would say if you pick up if you haven't played Wolfenstein 2 and you pick up like the whole bundle together of the DLC and the game, sure. You know, play them like right after you finish the game, but otherwise, you know, just just buy the base game and have a much better experience. Yeah. So I played a game. Actually, I woke up this morning to nice surprise. So we've talked about on the show that I love Stardew Valley. It's probably going to be one of my favorite games of all time. Did you play it? Uh no, just because like it never popped up. Like I have no interest in it personally. Yeah, but it's one of those games. Like I would give it a shot if I saw it on a good enough sale. You should. But um, uh, because I played a lot of the old Natsume like Harvest Moon stuff, and a bunch of other weird shit as we've established. I own it on PC, <laughs> Xbox, and Switch. <laughs> so I've spent sixty dollars, and I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, uh, there's a game that came out today called Graveyard Keeper, and I really want to play it. So I, I go on Xbox today, and what's been added to the Game Pass? Motherfucking Graveyard Keeper. Yeah. I have never been so excited to see a game on Game Pass. Like, yeah, literally, I don't think I've ever been so excited. I thought Doom. I was like, cool, I'm gonna get to play Doom. No, this. I am so excited to play the fuck out of this. Played a little bit of a video today. I played a little bit of a video. Uh, yeah, I recorded a video of me playing a little bit. Um, I gotta go back and play this. You basically, you wake up and you don't know what's going on, but there's this guy telling you, you're the graveyard keeper now. I think it takes place in hell. I hope that there's a cool narrative here. I really do. But basically, you're going around, chopping down trees, taking out rocks, collecting materials to upgrade the graves, and every once in a while, a talking donkey drops off a body, and you have to do an autopsy and then bury it. And that's so far the whole concept of the game. And then you're also, there's a farm you can tend to, uh, you can cook food. I think you can smith weapons, because there's also a combat section like with dungeons and stuff. So this game is just Stardew Valley Death Edition, basically. <laughs> And you see now he's, yeah. he's going down to the crematorium. There's all these areas that have these little blueprint tables, and that's where you can like upgrade and build new things. But I am very excited to get into this. Yeah, game. this is the exact kind of thing. Like I was just like, I don't know about that. Like, yeah, you gotta like, you, like if you don't love this type of thing, I just can't imagine you enjoying it. Yeah, I, I'm not a big maintenance gamer. You know. Oh, right. Okay, so right now, this is one thing that I loved. He picked up a log, and he's not picking up the other two logs. He's literally just walking into the the items and pushing them. Like, that's yeah, so interesting that. to me. Because I did it with a, with a corpse on accident. I was like, oh, I could just push this along. I, I love little gameplay things like that. Um, it seems like you don't pass out when you run out of energy like you do with Stardew. You just can't do anything the day and night cycle doesn't really matter so far um you have to go back to there's a town like i said there's a dungeon um the beginning of the game had me dump a corpse in the river and the tutorial guy was like what are you doing that river goes to the town so i I imagine that's gonna pay off at some point but that's it I'll, i'll probably have a lot more to talk about uh next week I should, yeah, I should have time. I don't see why I wouldn't have time to play it. Yeah. And uh, one thing I pitched as a topic, like, a couple weeks ago, that you're all excited about, is uh, buying games that aren't well-reviewed, but are totally up your alley. Because I bought Acorn Tactics. And let me tell you something. There's a reason that game's not (laughs) well-reviewed. Yeah. Oh, it's so depressingly bad. 
it it's bad from like mission two. Because the game, <laughs> like, the mechs are just really generic, which isn't terrible. Because the game, okay, so the ba- game is basically XCOM cutesy. That's basically what it is. You're mechs fighting little green blobs. But you know, these these guys, you want to you want to invest in a character. You want to be able to get a bunch of kills and upgrade them. Um, I have on my gameplay. I think I have Trollbeard version three, and I'm on mission <sighs> two because they keep fucking killing you because you're a shotgun guy. So he just dies. Oh, he dies yeah. in like two hits. Oh. There's nothing you can Damn. do, and the sniper guy has to reload. The machine gun guy is not very powerful, as you can see. So on XCOM, you have like a big battle battlefield, so you can take cover. You can. My cat's washing my hands. <laughs> it's very distracting. What do you want? It's, so you have a big battlefield. You can kind of run away. You can flank and all that types of things. In this game, you're on like these oil rigs, and you have set paths you have to go down. Yeah, I see and that. I That's right. Fucking rough. hate it. <laughs> I have never wanted to refund a game so bad on my Switch. It was only twelve bucks, but it is twelve bucks not well spent. Oof. Yeah, like I'm willing to fake fucking swan dive in a big pile of shit, but you have the five dollar or less mark, not twelve. Oof. The pile of shit has to be playable though. Yeah. <laughs> I bought Green Game for like a dollar. Have you seen that on Switch? No, I I barely turned my switch on. Oh, that's right. Let me pull this up. It was a dollar. <laughs> um. Oh, let's see if I can find it. It's such a terrible name, Green Game. But yeah, there it is. Green Game Time Swapper. So it's, if I remember correctly, like you have to tap or hold down the button to move. I can't really remember now. <laughs> But it's like it's not a good game at any at all. It's like two or three dollars full price. Um, oh shit, how did this work? It has something to do with time. Like you can stop time and start time, something like that. Yeah, it doesn't this, matter. The game. This is, is just a straight up mobile phone port. Yeah, it, it's a it's a doofy game that it's shit, but it's like cheap and it plays fine. Um, but man, Acorn Tactics is so disappointing because I could really go for a tactics game on my Switch, and I should have just bought Regalia, I think it's called, which is supposed to be like, uh, um, oh my god, why is the name escaping me? What's the tactics game on Nintendo? Fire Emblem? Fire Emblem? Yes, it's supposed to be like Fire Emblem, because that's what I want. I want a Fire Emblem or an XCOM game on my Switch. I should have yeah. got Regalia, because Regalia, I think, is like 25 bucks. It's supposed to be a good game. You know, that Acorn Tactics reminds me of a terrible rip-off version of Front Mission. Front did you ever Did you ever play any of the Front Mission games? I don't. That, that sounds familiar. We also, we need it, a fucking, uh... Oh, no, it is... Oh, no, what I should have got was, um... I'll think of it in a second. Front Mission. Yes, I played Front Mission. Yeah, Front Mission Three. Oh is, yeah, Front Mission's really good. Yeah, Front Mission Three is a high dollar Square Enix RPG from back in the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Front Mission Three is probably you know, probably like my second favorite RPG on the PS One. Yeah, that's a damn good game. Yeah, my my number one probably like I don't know if I'd still even. There's a lot of fucking dorks that wouldn't even probably call it an RPG, but Vagrant Story. Tiny Metal. That's what I should have bought. And that's not yeah, even... Yeah, ti- ti- Tiny Metal is like the knockoff of Advanced Wars. Advanced Wars. That's what I'm trying to think of. That's the fucking game we need, man, on the Switch. Where's Advanced t- Wars? Let's say, what are you, Tim Gettys right now? <laughs> is Tim a big fan of Advanced Wars? He's a big fan of Fire Emblem, and he wants a new Advanced yes. Wars, so yeah. Oh my god, they're such good games. I think they have to be it's being the same made company. somewhere. Is it really? Yeah, it's I the same don't... studio, I want to say. I don't think so. Let's just see. Advance Wars is made by... 
Intelligent Systems. Intelligent Systems, yep. Who made... And yeah, they make all the Fire Emblem Shit, games. Shit, you're right. And they made the Paper Mario games. Okay. So what, what's going on with Advance Wars, guys? What the fuck? Uh, Fire Emblem blew up for some reason because of fucking weebs. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Fire Emblem Weebs that want relationships good. in their RPGs where they can have babies. We need a new. We need a Fire Emblem game. I I, a, I am. I'm gonna make a hard stance here, Jacob. Okay. I'm tired of tactics video games that play into waifu culture. <laughs> okay, Fire Emblem's the only one I know of that does that. <laughs> That's literally why it's super successful. Yeah. Regalia might as well. I don't know. But as far as like good strategy games go on the Switch, I am playing one that I love that we've talked about on the show, I think. That I know I've I've done series on. Pixel Junk Monsters. Holy shit, this yeah. game's good. Yeah, those guys make good stuff. Spike Chunsoft. I love I, this game. Because effort, I haven't played one of their games that sucked yet, even though I don't like Pixel Junk. Monsters. Okay, I was gonna say because it's on sale for like twelve bucks right now on Switch. Yeah. Um, but it's basically you know I was looking at it, I was like it's a it's a tower defense game. I know how this plays. I don't necessarily need this in my life. Uh, excited to get it anyways. And man, I love it. I just love like to upgrade the towers faster. You you can just stand your dude next to him and he dances. Yeah, he just dances. <laughs> he just dances. Yeah, man. It's like they have great aesthetics. Like. All of the games they make, like they have just like such a well made, cohesive art style for that game. Like, uh, when you tried out Eden, like that whole game feels all you know, part of that world. I just want all the pixel jump games, yes, shooter. I want all of them on the Switch. I mean, it's a likelihood, it is. It needs to happen. Just a pixel junk collection. I would buy that up. With this game, I I'm not too far yet because you do have to complete the levels on like normal difficulty in order to progress to progress. Um, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to play it, but it's just so damn good. Like it's gonna be my main Switch game for the time being, pretty much. Yeah. Did you play uh, Mario and Rabbids? No, I should get that, though. Mario and Rabbids was fucking infuriating, man. Would it? I mean, I play XCOM, so it probably wouldn't be for me, right? Well, that's the thing, is, like, it, it, it's, like, baby's first XCOM. Yeah. Like, I did not like the way their system structure worked. Do you play XCOM? Uh, like, I played, you know... Old XCOM, new XCOM. Okay. I got XCOM 2 just chilling on my PS4 because it was given away free like a month or two ago on damn. the PlayStation Plus. It's a damn but, good free um, game. That was a good month for that. I think they gave away Absolver and XCOM. Absolver. What is Absolver? It's uh, like a fighting game dark oh, souls yeah kind of that's game. a weird ass fighting game okay yeah like super deep weird martial arts yeah. system of learning all these different combo structures and you build your own move set and fight other people online in like this open world-ish area it's a weird game but with uh mario and rabbits it was they just simplified like the cover structure and uh, essentially like rock, paper, scissors. It's like either you're in full coverage and you take no damage. Right. You're either in half coverage and like it's a 50 50 chance to get shot or you're in zero percent chance to get shot. You know, like, like you're either fully, fully vulnerable, 50 50 chance, no chance. There's like none of that granularity of like, oh, 35 percent chance to hit. Yeah, it's but that's just hey the, the intensity of XCOM though. Yeah. But the thing that was driving me crazy was some of the like enemy layouts and some of those maps kind of became like puzzle gamey. Yeah. To like to solve like the the fight you needed. It's like there's these big dumb rabbits that like slam you with this giant like stone rock 
or ice block, depending on there's different themed versions of the different characters based on what level you're in. And the thing is, like these guys, if you're within their walk range, they walk over to you and attack you if you attack them. There's no cap on the amount of times they can do that. Okay. So if you've got your whole party of three characters within range and you each shoot this guy, he's going to walk over and smack the one character for a lot of their HP. Then the next guy shoots, he's going to smack them for a lot of their HP. And then you shoot him with the third character and that guy walks over and gets smacked again. Like, like there's no... there. <laughs> There's no cap on these reactions. So, like, you have, you know, like, Mario and Luigi both have a version of essentially, like, Overwatch from XCOM. Yeah. Where as soon as, like, the enemy moves within their range, they fire a shot. Those are on cooldowns and on timers and can only happen so many times. Damn. The enemy doesn't, you know, suffer a lot of those restrictions. So then now you've got to kind of fucking waste a couple turns moving your characters out of range of the big guy and right. then still worrying about the other little guys like because it's really awful like uninteresting ju- jumbled up mess of like having to keep moving out of areas just because you're going to get punished by the horse shit the enemies can do I feel like that's a thing that happens in XCOM though with certain enemy types and certain boss battles and whatnot. So that's not outside the realm of, you know, turn-based. Yeah, like, it was just, for whatever reason, like, it just, the whole game itself wasn't as well designed. Yeah. And unless you really, really like the Mario aesthetic. I do. Like, some some, some, some of those battles, like, the, the traversing between the levels is really dumb. I don't know. It was, just, it was just one of those things that it was cool for, like, two hours, and then it was just... Like, I got right up and Thelma and Louise my ass off that ledge. <laughs> and my interest plummeted rapidly. Damn. Like, two lesbians and an old fucking Buick. What? <laughs> All right, well, moving on then. <laughs> so, the- did, you, did you ever see the movie Thelma and Louise? I don't think so. So, they're like these two ladies that, like, are like robbing banks. Like, Shit happens in their life, and they find each other, and they make this pack, and now they're just like robbing like gas stations. They rob a bank, and Brad Pitt's in that movie for some reason. <laughs> At the end, they're getting chased by the police, and they're out by like the Grand Canyon, and they realize like either they go to jail or they drive off and go out in a blaze of glory. So then they reach over and grab each other's hands and drive off the cliff. Damn. Yeah, it's a fun movie. Sounds like it. So the main thing I've been playing this week that I can't believe I've gotten this into is Battlefield 1. And I wanted Jeremy on the podcast this week so I can call him out because he fucking hates the game. I don't know if he hates the game. He doesn't like the game. And I have enjoyed the hell out of it. Did you, you played it? Yeah, I played a fair amount of it when it came out. And it was entertaining for a while. But it's just one of those games, like I've told you before, like there's no stakes. And that shit bugs me long term. Okay. It's like, oh, hey, like you could be the greatest player in the world at this game. And if your team isn't doing well, right. none of your accomplishments matter. And that's actually <laughs> something I wanted to bring up in these games. Because it is and forever will be the problem with Battlefield games is other people. <laughs> yeah. I, we were doing so well. We're flying in this, you know, biplane, triplane, whatever it was, bomber, taking dudes out. I shot down a plane because I was in the gunner seat. Awesome feeling. All of a sudden, I realized that we've been going straight for a while, and I look, and dude jumped out at some point, and then I died. Because it, <laughs> it, went, it went out of the map, and I just couldn't turn the plane quick enough. And it just yeah. it was like, what the fuck? We were doing so well. What happened? And I'm not 
I'm not gonna go. F- I couldn't even remember the guy's name, but you know, some people will be like, "Well, send him a message on Xbox and tell him to fuck off." Like, no, I'm not gonna do that. It's a waste of time. But um, yeah, that's the problem is other people. You know, I part of the the gameplay for the scout to sniper class is you have that little sniper shield. And I can't tell you how often I would be sniping at someone and one of my teammates would just lay in front of it or on top of me and block the shot so I couldn't see anything. Yeah. It's terrible. Like, you're so immersed. Like, my, my immersion. I get, my a little bit of, I get a little bit of that with Battlefield, especially this one with the trenches and whatnot. And they just get a dumb fuck like that. It's and he, He's teabagging you and it's like, yeah. Right, just... Go die in a fire. <laughs> like, like literally, a fact, there's a flamethrower over there, motherfucker. Th- there, there's a lot of fires in this game you there can is. die in. But I just, you know, everyone was talking about how terrible the weapons are, and it's like, yeah, well, it's World War One. <laughs> yeah, sucks. everybody else has to deal with those terrible weapons. Now, this game was real. Like the times I was playing it, it was really bad as far as. The meta, like like the okay. SMGs were like again like every one of these games. See, I have no idea what like, the meta is. I just I just play it. I'm like that gun looks neat. I'll buy that. <laughs> yeah, it's just like when you play it enough rounds. At least like I said, it's been a year probably since the last time I played it. Because this game's been out a while now. Yeah, but yeah. I actually, like, it's on sale right now for nine dollars with all the DLC. That's why yeah. I got it. But it was just like, oh, hey, everybody's killing me with this one gun. Great. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think it's that like way everybody... anymore. They, they've you know had a lot of time to make changes and patches. They and... also, uh, there's a like a $5 DLC pack, I think, that I got with mine that came with a bunch of like special weapons, like Hellfighter weapons and stuff like that. Yeah, I have so... that stuff. Yeah, the, the, the you get like the and... themed... Yeah. There's the shotgun and 1911. Yep. And then the slug. And then there's like an SMG. And uh, a knife. Yeah. Well, I love the variety. There is a variety of weapons, surprisingly, for that time period. And you can just tell all the goofy-ass designs. Because there's all these weapon companies that are trying to get their weapons out there. And it's just like, you're playing and you're like, alright, this is a SMG that loads from the top. That that's ter- okay. I'm gonna aim down sights. Yeah. yeah, this is terrible. Why did anyone yeah, decide it this way? The sight is on the left hand side of the gun. Yeah, and it's like uh, I've read stuff online. And people are like these guns are stupid. Why are they in the game? I was like, because motherfuckers used them in the war. Like, yeah, I I think it's great that they included these fucking terrible weapons. The uh, the thing that you know, has always been a problem with every one of the Battlefield games is there's a reason why, you know, there's never been competitive Battlefield because it's fucking stupid. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) To the point to where they tried to add a mode that was like a six on six, like more like higher stakes mode and then nobody wanted to play it because that's the problem with Battlefield. Is that yeah? They add all this cool stuff. And there's all this variety of all these different game modes, but you go two yeah. months after those modes get released, everybody's only playing Conquest. Conquest and Rush. Rush is also popular now after yeah. so long of them pushing that mode. Well, Rush is basically the best Call of Duty equivalent. Yeah. For the people that don't want to spend like six minutes running across the field to get sniped. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoy the game. I enjoy, I think the the gas grenades are really interesting. They add an interesting dynamic of you know having to put the gas mask on, um, then the fire grenades. Yeah, like I love the gas grenades, especially like if you you know, remember to equip a bayonet. Yeah, because then you can just rush oh, through man, and murder that's the people. The other thing, the bayonet that is so satisfying to get kills with that, and I don't I. I would really, I wish, I wish Jeremy was here. Cause I, I mean, did you enjoy it for what you played? Yeah. For, for until I hit, you know, my, my tolerance point essentially sure. of like, okay, this is getting to be less and less fun. Like it was great. Like I loved the, the, the stories, like the little vignette 
the campaign stuff. Did you play any of those? I finished the first one, and I started Lawrence of Arabia, and I'm terrible at stealth, so I might just go ahead and do a different one. But <laughs> I, I am 100% going to do those. I am a big fan of history when it comes to wars. I've always have been. I never got into World War One for whatever reason. World War Two, Vietnam, and, and those are both, and a little bit of the Korean War. I got really into and in the, in the Civil War, and, and uh, I have always read books about wars, and, but I never did with World War One. So I'm actually really interested in playing more of this, playing the campaign. I'm probably gonna end up going down a YouTube rabbit hole tonight or tomorrow, just learning about World War One stuff. Yeah, look yeah. at this gun. This gun is so doofy looking. <laughs> yeah, th- well, this gun is one of those guns that would have been mounted on a turret. Yeah. And rarely would have been, you know, a guy carrying it. I just, I, I love all, like, the homemade stuff, like the, the homemade grenades and the homemade melee weapons. Yeah. Um, there's an SMG that has nine rounds, and it's actually a good SMG. And I love the variety of maps. I think this game doesn't get enough love. I think it got way too much hate. I actually well, I need the, to look into why. Well, the thing for me is like the ballistics models of Battlefield is so specific. Yeah. Where if you try to do anything else and then come back like a week or two later to Battlefield, like you've got to relearn essentially how to shoot. I think I've put so much time into Battlefield games, I don't have that problem. Yeah, I just have never liked them enough. I always, Except for like when 1942 was out. Yeah, that played a lot of that. Good. Well, that was, that was very was, different for the time. Yeah, it was also drastically different than what they're at right now. Like, yeah. I I don't know. I might get Battlefield Five. I'm interested. You know, much like I'm interested to play you know, Black Ops 4, like, people just, you know, want to hate the things that are popular, but... And I feel like that might be a big part of why I feel like there's a lot of hate for Battlefield 1. Also, to be fair, like, you know, it's it's hard to get people that just got, like, established into a game than to swap over to something else. You know, how many people... I still see playing fucking Battlefield 4 or on my friends list. I still play it. It's, it's a good it's game. Like, it's like I don't remotely understand that <laughs> that logic of ever touching that game. Well, for me and like my old friend group was you know, there's not a whole lot we can all play at the same time together. Battlefield is one yeah. of the games you can. Well, see that's the fucking thing is most of these guys I know aren't playing in like groups of people they know like oh. <laughs> they're just jumping in and just like queuing in to like a conquest I'm like how what <laughs> yeah i i i did think about downloading battlefield 4 for like half a second and i was like nah um i'm gonna play probably a good few more hours of battlefield 1 but that i'm gonna hit my limit much quicker than i normally would because i'm playing on xbox and i don't have the people i normally play with battlefield for me is a social game so not having people to play with is going to cap that pretty quickly. And the sniping in the game is damn good. It's very satisfying. So I enjoyed a lot of what I played. And Jeremy's still not here just for me to yeah. call him out. So I guess yeah, I'm I, I, I guess I'm just like the worst human being possible to ever want a social game, essentially. Like... <laughs> It's like, hey, we can talk about other things while we do other stuff, but I'm not going to play a game I don't want to fucking play just to talk to you. Like, oh, right. No, well, Battlefield the, has always been our game, like the friend group's game, like it's ever since Battlefield 2 and 1942. So that's why we always go back to that. That's been the thing that's kind of sucked for me personally, being a guy that's super into, like, Competitive shooters, especially, it's just like most of like my personal friends, like I've known for a lot of years in my life, like they've all like transitioned out of wanting to play like competitive shooters, and they just want to do all the 
horrible bullshit Destiny two ish kind of you know like you know PVE grind shit. It's like no, yeah. no, <laughs> I want nothing to do with that. So like, it switch sucks that, that you switch know, to Xbox and PC. You can play with me. <laughs> uh, no, no, <laughs> really doesn't bother you. I mean, that. I I. <laughs> It's like it's just like I've already invested too much, like yeah, I get into that. the the PS4 market. Like I've got so much crap, I'm already still needing to play. That's why I, I don't fact... want to get a PS4 because I have so much invested on Xbox. Yeah, well, because yeah, like it's like yeah, just play the exclusives. Like, bro, if you get a PS4 just for exclusives, that's a couple hundred hours, right? There. <laughs> like, yeah, there's honestly like, not like. I don't want to play God of War anymore because I watched that whole game played. Um, the Last of Us is really what I want to play on PS4. Oh, and Uncharted probably. I don't. I yeah. still don't know if I would like those games. They're great. I I personally love them, but yeah. The 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 odd thing about the Uncharted games and the biggest complaint a lot of people had about those games is like the shooting. Right and. See the the bizarre thing about Uncharted is for how ridiculous that game is and like this crazy like action movie essentially you're playing you're playing like a a modern day Indiana Jones as a video game essentially yeah and that sounds awesome but for some reason the folks at Naughty Dog decided to make like some of the most realistic like ballistics in a video game that doesn't need it. <laughs> So like the recoil is absolutely insane, and then you're put in situations where like you're holding onto a ledge and like firing over, or you're running and gunning, and you're just missing all the time. It's like, well, yeah. If I was trying to actually run and shoot guns, this is what would happen. Most games you don't have the fucking courtesy to you know right. make you feel like the action hero when you're shooting, and not just like looking at a guy and like starting to throw some pistol shots in his chest, and you miss like the next three. Because the gun recoil, you know, flicked it out of the way. It's like, it's so weird. Like, the 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 choices they've made with the shooting in that game. Yeah, I'll probably end up getting a PS4 eventually when it gets cheap enough for me. And I don't know, maybe. I also might end up getting a PS3 if it gets cheap. Or if I find one cheap, rather. So. Yeah. I mean, I've seen those as low as like 80 bucks. Yeah. So you've been playing the uh, the Batman Enemy Within game, huh? Yeah, I played through. Uh, that's season two of the Telltale Batman series. I uh, had you know previously played through. Like I don't touch those games until the season's done. But like that's how I also treat any like TV show or anime yeah. or anything I do is like like someone asked me is like. A friend of mine, I got him interested in Game of Thrones, and he's like watching the show. I was like, I've never watched an episode of Game of Thrones. I've been waiting 20 years for these fucking books to wrap up. I can wait <laughs> another year or two for a TV show to finish, yeah. you know? We started like, I don't watching touch... it. I didn't like it. Yeah, it's like, I don't touch a TV show until it's done. Yeah. Like, like completely. Like, like if even if it takes like eight years, it's like if I'm interested, I'll I'll check it out then. It's like I I just don't care about like that week to week or month to month, you know, like staying part of the conversation. It's like I just don't fucking care. I've never really been like a big TV watcher. Episodic's never been my thing. Way to go, troll! But yeah, lost the network connection. Oh, what's up? <laughs> Your video. <laughs> Network connection lost. Oh, yeah. So, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, this stupid thing, like, it has this feature with Telltale, the crowd play, where anybody could just jump in and type in that code, and then they make votes. Oh, I was going to ask you what that was. Yeah, so, like, I had a guy come in and just actively try to fuck me up, like, at one point later on. And then, like, the last episode I was playing through that day, to end that series, a guy jumped in and I just answered a bunch of his questions because, you know, he's like a lot of the Telltale games and his son, you know, is a big fan of Batman. He's going to play it with him. 
Nice. But yeah, like with that crowd play feature they've added to a bunch of these Telltale games, like you have the option to let the the audience vote on it, or like the like their votes control the actual choice, or their votes just list you know like on your options here. Yeah, that's cool. So you so you can decide to go with the audience or not. So I just left it on like, hey, let the let the audience choose this. A guy just came in and realized that it was just like. I'm just gonna pick the dumbest things. <laughs> Man, so, the go ahead. Is season one good? Because I played the first episode and was kind of interested. Yeah, the season season one is great. Season two has the issue of like having to pick up from the premises created by the first season and and kind of force some like story elements in to then establish a new season essentially. Yeah. Like, like there, there are some, there's some things that from a basic writing perspective, I thought were really stupid, but once you get through kind of like the, the ham fisted kind of startup here to start this story arc for this season, then it plays out a lot smoother. It makes a lot more sense from that point. But like this initial end of this first episode, like setup was like really like, Seriously, you mean the the super genius guy didn't just throw this thing out the window? He had to die, or you know, like like really dumb plot devices. Yeah. To 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 create an instance to to add drama, to add stakes to the matter, and then from there, like it plays out a lot more, you know, organically based on your decisions. It's just the initial setup. And also the problem with a lot of these Telltale series is like the forced, like no clues given about the one twist that pops up like in like episode four or five of a season. Yeah. And then that throws a big monkey wrench into the whole like story you've kind of built for yourself. And now you've got to like react to this one thing towards the end and that fucking fucks up your whole plan. Yeah, they do that in this season. Yeah, I played the first season of The Walking Dead, and I played uh, The Wolf Among Us and enjoyed both of them a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the Wolf Among Us. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands and couldn't get into that. Yeah, I like there are people that really love Tales from the Borderlands. It's just like, for whatever reason, when I started that up, like that first episode, like the whole like pace of that was just so like, uninteresting to me i hit a certain point of having a conversation with somebody that's like fuck this and i just dashboarded that first episode close. feels like it's five hours long yeah i, I got why maybe 40 minutes in before i killed it you know <laughs> every time i play it i get a little bit further but man <laughs> the character i i don't give a fuck about any of those characters at all or maybe I did finish the first episode. Yeah, just none of the characters are interesting to me. And I guess maybe I've played too much Borderlands, or maybe it's poor writing. I just know where it's all going to go. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't like it. You know, that makes that makes me remember the fact that I never finished Borderlands 2. I haven't either. Like, I was literally at the last, like, essentially the boss fight. Didn't like my character, started a new character, and deleted the old save file. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just, I just never, I just never finished it. Damn. And by the time I got far enough with the next character I built that I wanted to actually, I actually enjoyed, I had already, like, played so much of the game and lost interest in it. Because my problem with both of the Borderlands games is, I played those when I had no internet, so I played right. them alone. Yeah, I think we I've never about played this. Borderlands co-op. And that is a co-op game. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. You you just got like super quiet on my end. Yeah, my audio. I thought the audio dropped out. Okay. Yeah, I I just couldn't care less about those Borderlands games. Well, the tales yeah. from the Borderlands, rather. I I love Borderlands one, and apparently, 
pre sequel is just not very good. I I enjoyed pre sequel personally. Like I actually played through the pre sequel and finished it. Huh. I might have to get it. Though. But like I tried it out when the Handsome Collection came out. See, I got the Handsome Collection a while back on Xbox for free, and but now it's not in my list, so I don't know what the hell happened there. <laughs> but. So you yeah. also you played some more of. What the hell? It's called not Pinball Wizard. You have a limit. Uh, yeah, pinball it's uh, Yoku's Island Express. That's right. Yeah, but let me make one last point. Like if if you've played the first season of the Telltale Batman, oh yeah, that second season is really good. I'd recommend it. Like for me personally, the Walking Dead games or the the Telltale games go Wolf Among Us, Batman season one, Walking Dead wow. season one. Okay. And then, you know, season two. Like I, I've played all of all of the Telltale games except for I never finished like past episode two of Walking Dead season two. I don't think I or, ever started season two. Or episode I never finished episode one of the Game of Thrones one. Like the the whole Telltale collection that had like. All the all of the Telltale series on the PlayStation up until like Wolf Among Us, yeah, and the uh, Game of Thrones and those episodes are still coming out for both of those. I bought those and they were super cheap for like thirty bucks. Like it was the entire collection of all that shit. Yeah, the Wolf Among and... Us is like, man, the, the writing in that is so good. And it like that first episode is like. This is interesting. These are characters I know. Oh, that's an interesting twist on that. That's neat. That oh, what? Like <laughs> yeah, like it, it, that game is much like the first season of Batman. Like it has okay. It's just gonna keep subverting your expectations based on what you think you know about these characters. Then you realize they're making their own kind of world. Right, and then that's what I've read crazy with, shit. with like the Joker and stuff. It's not a Joker you know. It's not any character yeah. you really know. Which I love that. Like, if you can, if I don't necessarily know how it's gonna go, even though like I know a lot of the Batman villains very well, and that's one of my favorite comic book heroes, if not my favorite. So if you're like, here's a Joker you know, kinda, like, all right, cool. Like I like Jared Leto's Joker. I think he's he's not the best Joker, but he's definitely interesting. Like he did some interesting things. Yeah. He was never given the time to actually right prove people wrong. Like <laughs> like if you immediately just wrote him off cuz he wasn't the Joker you've known, which that was a majority of the audience. But neither was the Dark Knight Joker. He's very like systematic, the uh, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah, he says he's about chaos, but he's not. He kind of isn't because like everything is really well planned, and he's very intelligent. And I feel like the Joker from the comic books and from the TV series, he's about chaos. <laughs> yeah. If anything, Heath Ledger's Joker is a fan of the comic book Joker. Yeah. We, well, hey, we hey. that's a whole topic we could go into. Real, real quick, hot take: Can we talk about how barely above average the Dark Knight as a movie is? Because no, we can't. Like, well, so no, we have can't. you have you watched it anytime recently? Yes, it's one of my so, favorite movies. Outside of the Heath Ledger Joker moments, it is a terrible movie. All right, let's it move is on to Yoku's Island. fucking <laughs> bad. Like it is boring. Let's move it's on. Slow. And then the Heath Ledger things escalates it and makes it you know like an eight out of ten. <laughs> so how's your bullshit pinball game? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yoku's Island Express, man. That game was fucking great. Like it. It's it's kind of frustrating at some points. This is on Switch, right? Uh, it's on Switch. I played on the PlayStation just because it happened to be on sale. 
like you're this dung beetle coming to this island to be the new postmaster and uh okay. you're you're tied to the ball and yeah that's how you traverse the world it's a metroidvania kind of game where you find new gear to do different things to get to new areas but your primary traversal is all pinball mechanics and yeah we talked about this game last week in case you were yeah wondering, viewer i just uh actually finally played through it because yeah. last time we talked about it, I just played like the demo. They've got a demo up. Is there a demo on Switch? Yeah, that's there... where I played the demo. Oh, okay. Now, I played the demo on the PS4. All the platforms it's out on, they gave they gave a demo. My Switch is too far away. But yeah, it's a uh, it's just super relaxing. It's one of those games where like the music's pretty cool. The animations are all fun. The characters are kind of you know, adorable, this weird style. And yeah, you just kick back. So enjoy is there, some Is there a button for the pinball bumpers or do you just walk over them? No, it's the left and right trigger. Okay. They're color coded. So uh, blue would be okay. the trigger, the yellow would be the right trigger. Gotcha. And when you see the one on the screen here, that's the two colors combined. Yeah. Either either bumper will set those off. It's just like I love pinball, and if somebody said they're gonna make like a pinball platformer, fuck off. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense, but it works way better than it should. But again, much like you know any actual pinball, sometimes some of the mechanics you need to do to get to some areas are absolute bullshit. Like you've got to be a perfect flick at just. That's the right what I was angle. thinking. Like right here. Like, that's got to be tough to get into that little spot. Yeah, because you then have to do some of the things. Like, that. you've got to figure out some of these mechanics to open up some of these pathways, much like hitting some of, like, the secret paths on an actual, like, pinball machine. So, yeah, some of these areas, I was just sitting there for, like, five minutes, just flicking at the same angle until I finally... Yeah figured out the exact angle and then I fuck up, fall back into the default and then I got to do it again. <laughs> I'm just like, you son of a bitch. So would you say it's a, it's a really tricky or difficult game? No, it's just, there are some moments and most of like the really tricky stuff is all like side stuff. That's not necessary. Yeah. So how long you does know, it take all, to complete the game? I mean, I completed it probably eight hours. How much is a full price? It's twenty bucks. Eh, it's probably worth it for the way to go on sale. Then it's a it's a cool game. Like if you were playing it handheld, it works really well for the Switch. Yeah, it looks like it would. And it's a it's a good pick up and put down game. I bought it on the PS4 just because the week I realized I was interested in it, it was on sale for like fifteen. So. It'll definitely be one of those games that goes on sale. Whoa, that thing's weird looking. Yeah, the, like the, this, it's this weird thing. Like you come to this island to be like the postmaster. There's a pterodactyl that was the old postmaster that retires, and now you're going to the village to try to become, you know, like, hey, I'm the new guy. Give me some letters to deliver or whatever. And then there's like the god of the island here that gets attacked by a god slayer. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's like like this escalated quickly. So yeah, there's all this weird like ancient shit going on in the background of this happy go lucky, stupid island adventure. This looks great. This looks like yeah, something I didn't know I wanted. Yeah, it, it's like the the more the more I looked into it, the more I realized fuck I need that now. Which, I mean, that's how I feel about Pixel Junk Monsters. It's like, do I need this in my life? And you look a little more into it, and it's like, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, you're, indeed, you're, I do. You're just sitting there looking at it. Cue SpongeBob beam. I don't know that. I don't know that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to get this. I might spend 20 bucks on this, actually. Yeah. I love the idea that once you, yeah, the post-pterodactyl. 
was the old guy. But uh, I love the idea that when you finally get the actual mailbag to go deliver letters, the the actual mailboxes on this island are just like collectibles, essentially. Yeah. And he's just, yeah, just go to the mailbox and throw a bunch of shit in there. Oh, so, yeah. so, so it's like you literally <laughs> yeah. just every mailbox you go to, you just chuck a handful of, new, of mail in there. Like, what the fuck? Like, people how are checking this, their mailboxes. How is this successful like, what is this? endeavor? <laughs> Whose shit is this? And why is there this many letters for a small island of like yeah. sixty people? Best I could tell. That's funny. Oh, there's some weird yeah, shit man. going on here. Some kind of egg thing. This is interesting. Yeah. Is there an interesting story that goes with it? Yeah, like the the kind of gimmick of just traversing the world and a lot of these areas are very different. And then there's that, yeah, the weird egg thing that just popped up for me on my end. It's a, uh, it's just super bizarre. Like there's a, there's a god under there that's a god egg. Although, like, Your ball so is much weird. Out of style. What a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can find these baubles that let you color the ball. Huh. So then, like, once you unlock the different baubles there for the different color types, you can then, you know, like, go in and combine different things. So at one point, I found enough and I combined the two and I had, like, this, like, Dia de los Muertos, like, cool, like, skull painted ball but if you combine nice. more than two colors it turns into an actual dung ball uh, so for a while there i was rolling around a giant ball of poop because he is a <laughs> dung beetle. Yo- yoku is the type of beetle that would actually play with poop uh, I, I just so i just much. love his his dumb smiling face yeah. the whole time like every time you flick him in the air and he's just chained to this ball and he's flying he's just making that same ha <laughs> Like, like, like he looks like he just eats pennies and says "wee" all of his life. He's got a shit-eating grin. Yeah, literal shit-eating grin. <laughs> all right. Well, so that that's a recommend. Yeah, that, that game is super fun. All right. Well, you got anything else for you've been playing this week? Oh, hold on. Did you see these slugs? I I know. Oh, I, I oh my god! Like you get a vacuum to like vacuum up these slugs and when you get close to them and you have the like it slows down time essentially to let you queue in to like hit the button to vacuum up the slugs like they make this (laughs) like like, dude their face like freaks out and they're screaming at you every time you're close to them it's like dude it's so terrifying it's like what the fuck damn is this First time it happened, I was like, okay, these slugs, like when they're in heat, they explode. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> so they're exploding slugs. Yeah. And then I get the vacuum thing, and that's, you know, one of the Metroidvania parts. Like now I can vacuum up the slug, and he's stuck to like my little ball. And then I hit these things to break them, or I can have the slug explode. And based on the angle of where the slug is pointing, it'll like rocket my ball in a different direction once he explodes. But then all of a sudden I'm just flying by and I hear kind of like the sound of the vacuum where I, it cues up to and I'll just see Hah! like this thing's just <laughs> freaking the fuck out. I'm like, what the fuck? Like it all was so unexpected. <laughs> That's awesome. The slugs are terrifying, man. I gotta play this game. Yeah, it's good stuff. Very good stuff in the looks of it. So we're gonna get into some news now. Oh, actually, I have a random game I want to bring up. I'm doing one this week. I totally forgot to bring it up. Or did I? Is this it? This is it. Uno momento. <laughs> I forgot to bring it up. Have you ever played a game? Called Red Asphalt. Uh, sounds familiar. Why is this all terrible game gameplay? What? Old games are hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, this has to be it. Okay, so it's this weird ass racing game 
that a buddy of mine, and of course it's not in HD, we used to play the hell out of this game. And I want to find it again. That's really all I have to say about it, because, like, <laughs> it's just one of those obscure games. I was like, oh, I, I have an obscure game for once. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I remember this one now. Yeah. I remember being really good, because I, I don't know if it is. It looks like yeah, it's this, a generic this... racer, actually. Yeah, it's a generic, like, shooter racer, but, you know, that was kind of a genre for a while there with, you know, Wipeout kind of really, like, hitting the peak of, like, presentation. Wipeout's good. Yeah. The Wipeout HD collection is really cool. That's That'd be a reason for me to get a PlayStation right there. But um, the other thing is, this reminds me just, like, the visual style of this. Uh, there's a game like that's been in like early access for a while on Steam, but it's finally about to actually like release. Yeah, and it's getting like I want to say Xbox and PS4 versions. It's called Grip. Have you seen that? No. Grip. So there was like a an old like Earth. I want to say original Xbox game that was like this is kind of like a spiritual successor. But like you get these like, yeah, it's it's a racing game where you battle, you like you've got weapons, but I want to say it's called Grit because you've got like the the big tires, and you can kind of like drive if you if you flip over and you land on the other side like you're still driving, and I think you can also catch onto the the ceilings in some areas. Okay. Oh, this looks interesting. Yeah, it's coming out pretty soon. I like these combat racer games. Like I like Mario Kart. Like Wipeout and Red Asphalt. Oh whoa, that was weird. This look yeah, it looks fast as hell. Oh you yeah. got a wall. Oh man. You know what this reminds me of? Are those R C cars that they can flip over? I used to have one of those. Yeah. It's exactly what these are. Essentially, and that's what that old game was, and now they've just kind of like escalated the premise and made it look faster and prettier. And this poor guy this just got out. flicked way out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Doesn't Rage have like some good vehicle combat? Uh well the the original Rage, not so much. Oh, okay. Like the the well the the combat works well enough in the vehicles, but I'm it's feeling. just like so much of so much of the first rage really is like yeah it's open world ish but most of your driving is through like these corridors or you get into like these like kind of like battle arenas mad max has good vehicle combat that's what i was yeah mad max has great vehicle combat and those are the guys that are making rage too yeah that's why i'm like super excited for rage 2 yeah rage 2 is gonna be really good Okay, now to get into the actual news. So you brought up this Nintendo introducing anti-cheat into Splatoon 2. Yeah, so uh, there was like a news story a while back, I want to say a month or two, where a guy had hacked the leaderboards for Splatoon, Splatoon? 2 okay. for, for their rank X, which is like their highest rank like stat board. So it's like one of the more popular leaderboards for people to look at for you know, the subset of people that care about Splatoon. Which is a cool game. It's just, you know, unless you're playing it, no one really talks about it, except for the stories of, hey, hackers are cheating all over this game and spawning in, like, one-shot weapons and they're invincible and all this other crap. So the guy hacked leaderboards to literally be the top, you know, four or five positions to... Have his name spell out, please add anti-cheat. Because he was fucking tired of all these people since there are like yeah. already some base level software and hardware like exploits to get, you know, system level access on the switch to start, you know, most likely the, the majority of people care about, you know, pirating shit because they're fucks. But then some people want to, you know, 
have that you know thought exercise of actually trying to hack it. Sure. Like the people actually, people actually doing the work. You know, they're usually guys that are trying to get actual work in security, and a lot of these are kind of like their portfolio, essentially, to prove to prove you know their skills. And then there are the people that then find some of these exploits and then add these other software tools to like, hey, I just want to pay for my video games. <laughs> yeah, this. Now I'm just watching Splatoon. This game's always looked interesting yeah. to me. Yeah, Splatoon's Splatoon's a really interesting shooter, man. It it's a whole different feel. But yeah, so essentially, before this guy did this hacking. It seems that Nintendo had already like internally acknowledged a problem and had added these uh, logging features and integrity checks to you know verify essentially the files of the game as you start it up to see if you've tampered with it at all. Yeah, so I think that's in my opinion, that's how it should be. Shouldn't tamper with especially online games. Yeah. Well, also, like, like it's unfortunate that, you know, they picked, you know, a hardware chip with an exploit people didn't know about until, like, three months after the Switch was released. Yeah. That they can't fix. So, the people, once more of these, you know, tools are publicly available, it's just going to get worse and worse. So, it's good to see that, you know, at least some point, they're already like improving their online system for the games they have out, even though their online system still doesn't really work that well. <laughs> Mid-September. Yeah. But yeah, so apparently if you've ever started the game up with any of the tools in place, even if you never went online, uh, once they flag you for, you know, failing that integrity check, you're banned. It's just, yeah. it's just over. So that's cool. So even the guys that were just cheating in the the single player like campaign and other stuff, like they're they're screwed too. It's like, hey, get this horse shit out of here. Stop cheating, you fuck. Yeah. I mean, didn't Nintendo back in the day have a huge problem with the game genie? We, well, they try to take him to court. Yeah. So it doesn't way way back in the day. They still got a big problem with cheaters, even in single player stuff. Yeah. I keep, every once in a while, I'll have to, like, nope, that's not real. I catch myself whenever I see some crazy mod for Legend of Zelda and the Breath of the Wild. Like, you see, like, Goku or some shit in it. i be like, what is that? Oh, it's a mod. Never mind. Yeah, it's like you see Shrek as one of the high knocks from Breath of the Wild. Yeah, that, I just saw that recently. I think that'd be fun. Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know how those are happening, right? Oh, with like um, how, with emulators. Yeah, they're yeah. yeah they're emulating the Wii U version on PC. Right. Yeah, I I, I love the way some of those things look. And uh, so I got another news story here. Unless you got something to add to that. Well, I was just gonna say, like, I hope that they stick to this and they really like focus on this because. They're they're just kind of fucked. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's a lot of the a, lo- a lot of those exploits that just give you like some basic system modding tools that don't give you like full access, but it's like it's so simple. Like literally, it's like a click, like a two button click thing. Now, once you've got the switch open, that use the tools that are the same tools they use for the Wii U version of Splatoon, like. <laughs> Like the, the the game files are so similar between Splatoon one and two, where they literally just were able to release the tools as is, and then have updated it more for the fucking cheat tools. But I'm hoping, knowing that this is going to be a problem unless, you know, magically, Nintendo is just a fuck and sends out a kill switch to all the switches that are alive right now, <laughs> and put out you know reissues of the hardware. Uh the 20 million switches that are out there now are all vulnerable 
and these exploits are just going to get worse and worse. I'm hoping they stick to this and really focus on keeping anti-cheat materials in all their games. Yeah. Yeah, they got to do something to protect the people that don't want to deal with cheaters. So I'm glad to see this happening. All right, so moving on from that, uh, I did you see that they're removing Forza Horizon 2 from the Xbox like library? Yeah, I saw that you know they they listed it as end of life, but yeah, that was a weird thing. I guess a lot of people are you know freaking out about it. It's like now it's just gone off of the store. Like you can't download it again. If you own it, you can. But apparently, this has something to do with the licensing of Forza, and Forza Horizon Four is getting ready to come out. I don't yeah. know. This is all weird to me. I would assume that they would like have a license that would be indefinite, kind of. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Is that almost never happens because it's almost never financially worth the extra investment in that initial, you know, bargaining. Because that's been the thing with a lot of games. You know, like a lot of people got upset that most of the GTAs now have had updates to patch out music. Yeah. But still, if Microsoft can publish Forza 4, how have they lost the rights so that Forza 2 can't be bought? Any, I don't know. That, that's just the, the, the license for that game in that instance of use ran right. out. And they'd have to pay whoever knows how much money again hmm. to then relicense it for you know a couple more years. But honestly, what's the return on investment on a, a considerable license fee yeah. For a game that no one's going to buy. And if they do buy it, it's on sale for like 10 bucks. So Well, and it's actually part of uh, Games of Gold for August. Yeah. Which is pretty smart. You know, if somebody gets it for free and really enjoys the driving in it, they're probably going to get number four. I should probably play it, actually, because I've never played a Forza game. I've played a bunch of the Forza games. It's just... They 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 I've never enjoyed them. Yeah, boy, are they pretty. This is a pretty game. Yeah, they look great and they play well. It's just like the the Horizon games are the more kind of fun versions. Okay. So they're they're less they're slightly less sim cuz you know, original Forza is just hardcore sim. So like you've got to like you, you, there's there's not much room for you fucking up. Like, yeah. it's not like you're playing burnout and you can just like crash out of nowhere and then you come back. You're doing like eighty off of the spawn. You have a chance to catch up to people. It's like no, if you fuck up, yeah. if you don't know how to actually drive a car, you're gonna suck at that game. Now that's a good racing game, burnout. Hell yeah. But yeah, Horizon. Burnout. Horizon adds a little bit more arcade feel to the driving, but I played Horizon 3 for a little bit. For me, it's still like way too sim. Yeah. Like I was a I was a big Gran Turismo guy back in the day. And like the the trials, like the license trials in the old Gran Turismo games are just an exercise in masochism. <laughs> I had a buddy that things. played every one of those games and 100 percent of them. Yeah, like he's a psychopath. Back in the days <laughs> where before we had achievements and he did it just for him. Yeah, that was the problem. Yeah, I think about the fact that Gran Turismo A Spec, I fucking yo know, had all the licenses. That was literally probably 150 fucking hours <laughs> of my life I can never get back. And for what? <laughs> for nothing. Not even a cheap. Yeah, essentially. Like I like like I you just have to take my word for it. Like <laughs> unless I can magically go find the memory card I had from whatever fucking drug addict if they didn't break it or it fried, you know. They didn't delete the save file. Like <laughs> there's just no history of me right. doing this. So yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I didn't know maybe you had a little insight into it. It's just well, weird to me. I, it reminded me of, yeah, the thing with like songs in a lot of games getting patched out. 
but then it really made me sad because oddly enough today while i was at work uh one of the songs from the soundtrack of the game came up in my playlist yeah but way forward they made a scott pilgrim versus the world game you just can't get that game anymore which one the scott pilgrim yeah really the license is expired and it's just removed from the stores you can't buy it oh that sucks i've wanted to play that it was a good game like way forward makes great like side-scrolling action games and that was like a brawler with great pixel art and great music and it played well and then yeah the license ran out and dunzo never see it again Hmm. so unless you you know go find like a, a pirated copy of that game you can't legally buy it anymore that was an arcade game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like a digital only game. Damn. So it's, so it's not like Transformers Devastation also you can't buy anymore? What? That's the not even that old of a game, is it? Yeah, the license on that died real fast too. That was supposed to be really uh, good. It was a platinum game. Yeah, it's a, it's a 3D brawler. But again, unless you go find a physical copy on like your Xbox or your PlayStation, or pirated on PC, like, it's done, though. <laughs> what? Yeah, been removed from... What? Yeah. Uh, there was also, like, a terrible Ninja Turtles game that was out and then died and then fucking disappeared. These fucking companies have to know, like, we're gonna lose our trademark or whatever in two years. Why even bother putting the time and money into these games? Well, that was the thing with, like, that Transformers Devastation, like, yeah, I want to say it was like one year. It was two years. Was it two? Yeah. Well, then that Ninja Turtle one that was also a platinum game was like six months, and it was they just delisted it. They originally delisted it just because it was terrible, and then really? the license expired. I was just about to say, Platinum Games makes good stuff. Yeah, well, Platinum Games makes too much stuff, oh, and okay. a lot of shit comes out of there because they also made this awful. Um, Legend of Korra game that was like a digital only game, like the. Huh. Uh, but they also made Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which is yeah. fucking great. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, this isn't it. Mutants in Manhattan. Yeah, I, th- I think that's the one. Okay. I think that one is no longer being sold either. Uh, seems like it is. I don't see any. Oh nope! The game was removed from sale on all digital yeah. on January third. Yeah, it's it's digitally dead, but they had physical copies of it. Uh, it was published May twenty fourth, two thousand sixteen. Removed January third, two thousand seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is this the Ninja Turtles game that sucked? Yeah. Well, every Ninja Turtle game no sucks. <laughs> Except for like uh Turtles and Time or whatever the the that the one arcade game. Yeah, I think it's Turtles in Time. There's um an old Xbox game. What is this? Battle Nexus? Did you ever play that? No. I think I know the one you're talking about. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah. I don't know why this guy is just fighting a box. But it's guy... also again more of these unlisted or delisted games. I think that uh Ghostbusters that came on like the Xbox 360 is also dead. I believe that Ghostbusters has some serious issues with uh with like their licensing and shit. But this Battle Nexus game was pretty badass from what I remember. From what I remember. <laughs> yeah. That that that's the issue. I don't know what's happening. I'm, yeah, he's just like try, hitting a box. <laughs> I'm trying to skip around to find gameplay and it's just people wandering around doing nothing and all right, never mind. Maybe this game's not any good. YouTube should yeah. prevent me from Maybe it was cool. Game. When I had the patience for it, yeah. and now it's just kind of mediocre. I'll tell you what but, is uh, cool. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I I randomly thought to myself the other day, I was listening to somebody talk about it, and they're like, 
they happen to be talking about the the MCU movies. Yeah. And they they were talking about you know whenever Hawkeye comes back, I was like, who really wants Hawkeye? I was like. Well, me, if I'm playing the Avengers arcade game, because Hawkeye was the fucking best character in that game. Hell yeah. <laughs> I like Hawkeye in the MCU movies. Yeah, but like he, he just hasn't shown up in a long time. Yeah, it's fine. Poor Hawkeye. <laughs> so, finally, to get to my exciting news, a few episodes ago, we have a podcast titled... We need a time splitter sequel. Well, and yes, this this fucking news story is from this year. It's from five days ago. THQ Nordic somehow has acquired the rights to Time Splitters and Second Sight. Who the fuck is resurrecting THQ? Well, <laughs> see, that's the weird thing with uh, Nordic Games. Is like they were this European publisher. And whatever THQ had the fire sale when they fell apart. Like, there are certain franchises that got bought up that were, you know, much more favorable. Yeah. And they just, they just literally came in and bought all the other shit. Like, like they were the guy that came to the fucking yard sale, like four hours after it started and said, Hey, I'll give you like a quarter for that. And like, cool. Just get it off my lawn. God damn it. <laughs> so yeah, they already owned like a majority of the old THQ franchises. So now they've just been slowly yeah. buying them all back one after another because they're making Dark Siders 3. Uh, they own Red Faction. They just put out the War Marstered or the, right. the Remarstered yeah, version of some, Red Faction Gorilla. Some stupid name like that. Yep. War Marstered was Dark, Dark Siders 1. It's remarster like like they're terrible puns. Like yeah. All their things are horrible, hideous puns. And they published uh that like I think the last time this came up in that podcast we talked about uh I mentioned that Time Splitters one, I wanna say, is playable inside Homefront the Revolution. Oh, that's right. Because THQ Nordic owned the publishing rights for the actual like old games. They just did not own the rights to actually make new games. Oh, shit. They own the rights to Painkiller? Yeah. I'm going through their list of acquisitions. There's Oh, my God. There's a lot of shit in here. Yeah, they, they have a lot of goddamn franchises that are long dead and should stay dead, like Time yeah, Splitters. probably. Oh. Postmortem? That, that looks familiar. <laughs> Moment of silence. <laughs> I like that everybody freaked out about Time Splitters and no one seemed to give a Poor second sight. I know that's exciting too. Destroy all humans. <laughs> Frontline, Field of War, Full Spectrum Warrior, MX versus ATV, Red Faction, Splashdown, Stuntman. They owns all kinds of shit. The outfit, Titan Quest. Oh, they put that on Switch and it's shit. Fight me. <laughs> 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 so, and, and if no one has any context to that joke. <laughs> I was all excited about Diablo 3 being out on Switch and you said the Titan Quest was already there and it's better and it's fucking not <laughs> get the fuck out it's just Titan- an old troll being a troll Titan Quest is not very good uh, Jagged Alliance which I think there's a new one coming out soon uh, Sinmora oh god damn Comanche uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy? Alright. Gianna Sisters? Yeah. Hell Dorado? Uh, that, that sounds familiar. 1940s? Is that like the the arcade game? I wonder. I think so, yeah. Like I love the those games. The sh- the shmup, like the, yeah. the plane. Yeah, and then Time Splitters and Second Sight. Second Sight is fucking awesome. And I have... What was the other game that came out that was super similar to that? Um, yeah. It was another one of those re- remote possession kind of games. The second Sight and... There's, there's another one. Yeah, it was a, a psychic type game. Because when I saw Second Sight, it's not... 
It's not super similar. Psyops. But yeah, well, yeah, Psyops is the one I thought about. Because Psyops is a, a good game. <laughs> Psyops is the one I played and enjoyed. I don't know. I did play Second Sight. But I don't Second remember Sight it as well. I don't remember it as fondly. That's for sure. Yeah, Psyops is one of those Midway properties. And whenever Midway got like kind of like carved in half and bought out between two different companies. Like, I don't know who owns the the rights for PsyOps, but a good amount of the crew that worked on PsyOps worked on uh, the LucasArts game, uh, The Force Unleashed. Really? Okay. That makes That's a why lot of sense. A lot of those mechanics were very similar. Yeah, with the Force powers and everything. They just happened to use... Uh, they were one of the only other games other than Rockstar that used the Euphoria engine for their uh, skills and modeling. Okay. Yeah, PsyOps was really good. PsyOps was a was a dumb game, but it was really goddamn. Wow, this makes so much sense now. That's just like the Force Unleashed. Yeah. That's crazy. It's not crazy. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, PsyOps, that's another game we could use a sequel for. That's for damn sure. I just thought that was really interesting. Apparently they listened to our podcast. Let's get to now. But uh, the last little bit of news here that we could talk about is Diablo 3 is coming to the Switch. I guess for those that (laughs) want Diablo 3 still. You're, You're so excited. It's like I enjoyed all of my time with Diablo 3. And then I was done. <laughs> I didn't know there's a Diablo 3 collection with Reggie or video. <laughs> I want to watch that later. Nah. I, I, am, not, Reggie. I am not playing a, a Nintendo video on this. <laughs> and then we'll get flagged. <laughs> Even though I'm pretty sure I already have. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I played the hell out of Diablo 3. Me and Bob have a like kind of sir, kind of sort of running series in Diablo 3 where we're trying to finish it. Um, I think we finished the vanilla game. We're in the DLC now. But I love Diablo 3. It's a fucking fantastic game, and it's it has a perfect home on the Switch, I feel like. I think this game's going to be great on the Switch. And this is just going to be proving ground for... Uh, everybody's saying Overwatch. I don't know if Overwatch would do well on the Switch. Is Paladin doing Hearthstone. well? Hearthstone. Yes. Hearthstone would do better. I want Hearthstone so bad. I posted on Reddit, you know, everybody's all excited about Diablo, and, and everyone's saying we're going to get Overwatch. I'm over here waiting for Hearthstone. <laughs> my, my thing is, is the same reason why they essentially canceled, because they were working... They they had mentioned they were going to put out Hearthstone on like the Xbox and PS4. Okay. But I have a feeling, you know, and a lot of people speculate that they canceled those projects and that never happened because they realized, you know, they have to give a cut of all those fucking card packs. Right. To, you know, the marketplaces they're already on. I guess they didn't want to it wasn't worth the financial investment to then support two other versions of that game. And still lose money, you know, on every one of those card packs. Plus also, you know, that game is so like mouse touch focused. Hearthstone? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean Gwent is on the Xbox. Yeah, but 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 Gwent works, you know, fairly differently. You don't have to like drag and drop, you know, an attack from one character to the other. They'd have to like restructure that the way that animates and yeah, yeah. You would just be like sliding left or right and choosing which target instead of dragging and dropping. But I guess they said, "Hey, fuck it, it's not worth the effort." Yeah, Magic is also an Xbox and it works that way. I think it could make it work, and I think yeah, they could switch, make it work on a Switch. It's probably going to be mostly touchscreen. Yeah, like it is, which is unfortunate for anybody wanting to play on their. Uh, 
TV. Well, I'm sure you can. It's just it's going to work better with touch controls. Yeah. I doubt they'll make it to where you can't play, you know, traditionally with buttons and whatnot, even though, you know, you shouldn't. <laughs> well, I mean, that's an option to do, like, handheld-only games on the Switch. Yeah. Have you played much it's- Hearthstone? I played a fair amount of Hearthstone, you know, like when it first came out. And then I realized, like, I'm not the card game guy. No? Just because, again, it's fucking tedious. <laughs> like, like I didn't mind playing, like, the old PS1, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! games. Because any of those old, like, card games on, like, PS1, PS2... You got like the full like library of those cards up until that point when they started making that game. You didn't have to like keep spending like money, dollars after dollars after dollars just to get a chance to get a deck to try out. Yeah, I could just go in there and just you know build a deck, fuck around with it, try that out, lose to AI people because I made a terrible deck with a lot of holes and I'd fucking die. Like, I'm not going to then spend... Because I know people have spent, like, three, $400 on Hearthstone. See, I think I've spent maybe $30. And I have a yeah. lot of cards. Because I spent a long time. And I still do occasionally. I'll jump on there and grind for a couple hours, get a bunch of packs. And I it's my favorite card game. Yeah, like, I appreciate it. I love the game. It's just... Like I, I'm never gonna turn on my PC to play Hearthstone, and I don't game on my phone. Yeah, I I play it a lot on my my Kindle Fire. Yeah, that's that's my problem. Is like I I just rather not play it than play on my phone. Essentially. Yeah, I don't. I won't play it on my phone. Um, that's why I, I'm not currently playing uh, the Elder Scrolls one because it's not on a Kindle Fire. I would love to play it, but it's just not there. And a lot of people say the Elder Scrolls one is better, and I I don't agree. I love the RNG and the crazy themes of Hearthstone. I think that's what makes it special. But I'll be very excited if that comes to Switch. You gonna play it if it comes on Switch? No. <laughs> Damn. Um, Just because again, it's this is it's the same game. Like yeah. my main disagreements with wanting to play it, like. It's one of those things where, like, I, I'm i not willing to invest the time to not need to spend a lot of money on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I am. I don't mind. Yeah, that, also, that... Hearthstone, like, when a new expansion comes out, they give you, like, 15 packs if you just do the quest. They give you a lot. They're very generous in that way. Yeah, when I was actively playing Hearthstone, no one I knew wanted to play it. And then I realized, like, hey, I also don't want to play it. (laughs) Right. Uh, But yeah, that's the thing. is like, like I have so many friends I've disappointed over the years because I don't play Magic. That's a a money pit right there. Well, like for me, it's not even like if I care about the thing, like I spend a lot of money. Like I just posted earlier the fucking needs more cowbell meme from Fortnite. Yeah, that's they added the emo. I've spent literally, I added it back up in my head. I've spent over $200. On- that's crazy. <laughs> and I, like, I don't even, I'm not even concerned about that money spent. Because I've gotten hundreds of hours out of the two hundred dollars I've spent of enjoyment, and I've gotten a lot of personal time with friends. I've had crazy experiences with strangers. You know, it's it's been a great time, and I can go back in and just scroll through like the locker and just see all these dumb emotes and swap out whenever I want. They added a cool feature to randomize, right? For, like, the skins, so I don't even have to, like... Oh, yeah, that's like, what I've always done. I don't have to do the pickiness, but uh, my thing is, same reason why I can't fucking stand board games, 
Some reason I don't like card games is like same reason why I don't give a fuck about Minecraft and why I probably won't play. All Star right, Valley, calm like, the fuck down. <laughs> it's just like I don't like like maintenance. Like I don't like having to go back in and like re refigure out and like slowly fine tune all this crap oh, to keep f- up with it. That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's the thing that like I just realized like hey I I have the the attention span <laughs> of something that doesn't exist. Yeah. It's, it just doesn't exist. That. I, I was gonna say like hey, it, it, l- saying I have an attention span is 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 just a a, a false positive. I mean, like, you, don't you get me wrong. Like talking when, for two hours. Like when I latch in on something, like if it clicks for me, whatever it is, like so much of my like gaming is like when I like click and I just get a feel. Like it takes me a while afterwards after I play a game to stop and put into words and think about why I was enjoying the thing or why I wasn't enjoying it. But if I fall into a game and I stay there like that Yoku's Island, like I just sat down and played six hours straight before I realized, you know, it'd been six hours. But I think like we've there. discussed before a, a big part of the games for me that I stick, a, stick to a lot are games that evolve. Like that's why I do and Wolfenstein just don't do it for me. Cause it's like the, the next evolution of that game is like, you got a new uh, thing that makes your assault rifle shoot faster. Like, yay. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah, and the, the fireball guy now shoots bigger fireballs. Yay. Well, that That's not enough for me. A game like Prey, where it's constantly evolving, constantly abilities are going crazy, or, you know, like Stardew, where you start off very small and it just it gets greater and greater and greater the task. I love games like that. No? Yeah, I like I understand what you're saying. Like I was just thinking about you know, Wolfenstein does drastically evolve like later game. Wolfenstein or Wolfenstein 2? Both of them, okay. but again, in the case of both of those games, like the 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 time investment to get to the point to where it then like opens up is considerable. Okay. Like the the the, the beginning of both of those games is not very good. I don't remember how far I ended up getting into Wolfenstein, but I mean, yeah, nothing both really of the, happened. Yeah, both of the Wolfenstein games, like they're these really interesting, crazy character stories. Yeah. So, like the initial intro on both those games is really bad, as far as like actually playing through them. And then once you hit the point where it opens up and then you see the rest of what that game's going to be, it drastically improves. And then you're now invested in these characters, even though the game part was mediocre at best up until this point. And then it expands and becomes this great thing. It's just, they, they, they have a really bad start. Yeah. Prey on the other hand was just, Hey, here's this game. Have at it. You know, pray, pray like as I, I think I've told before on this, like the the way that game teaches you as you're playing it, right? Just in the environment alone, like oh hey, how to use the glue gun. As soon as you find the glue gun, it shows you everything you can do with the glue gun, just in one screen. Yeah, I haven't got to play much more pray, but uh, I also that's one of those games I refuse to uninstall. Because if I do, then I'm really not going to play it again. Yeah. Like, uh, what's the second? Is the second Tomb Raider Rise? Rise of the Tomb Raider, yeah. Yeah, I uninstalled that game and I haven't reinstalled it. You know what else I uninstalled this week? Destiny 2. (laughs) One step at a time, Jacob. You'll you'll beat this. You'll you'll get better. Here's the thing. I've beat it for 14 days because I'm going to go back when Forsaken comes out. I've decided I'm going back. Yeah. I don't know how long, but I'm going back. There's a lot of good stuff coming out about that. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Hoping and praying. I was going to say, 
I just heard a sentence. I beat it for 14 days. Like, God damn, you must have Popeye forearms. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus, leave it alone. It's dead already. Let it go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and with that, we're way too tired. I need to go to bed. And... <laughs> Me too. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Did you have anything else to add, by the way, to the Popeye arms uh, or anything else? I was just going to say, uh, for some reason, as we were talking about other games, a random obscure game popped in my head, but it's not worth talking about at this point. Okay. I was thinking of all the weird like fighting games I played because we were talking about these like weird genres. I think it was like when I mentioned Blue Stinger, and I was thinking about like the weird spiral of weird knockoff in that genre games happen after anything happens and becomes popular. Yeah. Like all the MMOs after WoW blew up, all the battle royales now that Fortnite blew up. And I was thinking about when like Tekken three specifically blew up insane. All the bad fighting game franchises that started popping up and getting localized here in the U S from Japan. There was a franchise called bloody roar. Uh huh. It's not very good. You're fucking the whole wrong. the whole thing. <laughs> they were cool. I enjoyed them, but mechanically, as fighting games, they're they're not very good. I remember them being really good. <laughs> yeah, they were fun if you played them with your friends. But if you ever you know went against anybody that knew what they were doing, they were hideous. I feel like this might be like when I went back and played the original Killer Instinct. And I was like, man, these games are so fucking good. And then played it and was like, oh, these games aren't very good. No, they're not very good. But yeah, I just, for this some just reason, I was thinking like virtual about... Virtual Fighter. Yeah, it's it's a similar style. It was an arcade This is not game. what I'm thinking of. I don't know what I'm thinking of. Then, yeah, okay. But yeah, so like you start off as your human forms. And when you kind of like build your super, you go into beast form. So it's so it's a lot like a Street Fighter Alpha Three, or any of the other Street Fighters. Once they added like the super meters, you know what? You're right. It wasn't worth talking about. <laughs> yeah, they're they're dumb. Like there's so many of these crazy like games I could tell you about. There was one that was actually like super cool, side scrolling 2D. Where it was like high schools fighting in Japan. Oh, let me uh, find that name. I think I know what you're talking about. Rival schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good. Those game. were those were cool, and those are good fighting games. Because those are made by Capcom, and they put like a good team on them, and it was just so dumb, like the trope of schools fighting each other. In like all these manga and anime for so many decades that they finally then made a fighting game about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Rival Schools. That's man, that's a game I haven't thought about in a long time. Yeah, some of those characters I want to say popped up in yeah. one of these big crossover fighting games recently. They have. Uh the well, it was the Capcom versus Tetsunoku. Yes, that's <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah, Tetsunoku is like one of those companies that made a lot of those other weird, dumb fighting games at the same time as Capcom. But then most of their stuff never got released in America. Right. Who's Damn, now I want to go find Capcom versus Tetsunoku. <laughs> oh, look who's back. It's Vocalist 5. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> right as we're trying to leave, he peeks in here. That's okay. He can go back and watch the VOD. It's also going up on YouTube. I'll go ahead and do the outro. Thank you for watching, guys, or listening, if you're listening to the audio version. Uh, you can find this podcast on iTunes and Google Play. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on... Uh, or you go back and watch it on Twitch if you want. Or you can find every this and my Let's Plays. And, oh, there's a new Lark Brothers video out, which I'll show a little clip from while doing the outro. Brian talking as he always does. Bamusa, sorry, it's Bamusa, not Brian. 
Anyways, you can find the Lark Brothers, you can find my Let's Plays, you can find this podcast, you can find all the other podcasts we do on futurevillains.com. F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. Thank you for listening, guys. Uh, did you want to plug anything? Did you want to plug your Twitch.tv troll? Uh, I mean, if, if you're just trying to find me, it's always Trollbeard with that horrible underscore at the end. <laughs> All right. Well, like anytime, I, anytime I go home and I play a game, ninety nine percent of the time I'm streaming it. There you go. Go subscribe to him. Subscribe to me too. Subscribe to everybody. Subscribe to the Lord Brothers. Subscribe to FutureVillains.com somehow. Go home, hug your family. <laughs> go home, hug your family. Thank you for listening, guys. Bye. <laughs>